Hey everyone, I'm Katie Talati, Director of Research at ARCA. I'm responsible for identifying and analyzing digital asset and blockchain opportunities for ARCA's funds. As part of our research, my team and I examine token prices and the market events that act as catalysts for price shifts. Uh, based on our research and market events over the past week, we wanted to share with you some notable pro token price movements and what we think drove those moves. Before we get started, as, and as a reminder, this is commentary. It is not intended to be investment advice, investment research, or a recommendation. Please consult your investment professional for your own circumstances. All right, guys. So this week, we're going to get started with Arweave. So for those who aren't familiar with Arweave, um, it is a decentralized permanent storage solution uh, that was designed to essentially create a permanent version of the internet. Most re recently, though, it's actually been used to back up NFT data which if you're not familiar, um, NFT data, if not properly stored, can uh, essentially mean that the metadata for an NFT asset can disappear off the block, even though it's on the blockchain. Um, so are we, like I said, is this decentralized storage solution. It's been around for a few years now. This last week, it actually saw a huge increase in transactions um, over the last couple of weeks um, because a lot of additional documents and files have been uploaded related to the Ukrainian crisis. Um, so very interesting. Um, they actually saw similar um, spouts of kind of activity in the past when there's been instability in the region. Uh, I know it was quite a while ago, but during uh, some of the initial um, Hong Kong pro-democracy riot uh, uh, protests a few years ago, there was a ton of documentation being uploaded related to that. Um, so Arweave is really an important tool and project for um, countries that are, you know, or areas that potentially uh, face censorship resistance. Um, in the case of the Ukrainian crisis, though, what's interesting is the documents that are being uploaded aren't actually um, things that are being taken down due to censorship. A lot of what's being flagged is propaganda from the Russian government that is important to just catalog as part of history. Um, so there's things in there like documented or doctored files of Ukrainian soldiers greeting Russian soldiers at the border and Ukrainian um, soldiers doing nefarious thing to Russian soldiers. So the kind of propaganda that you would expect to see um, during uh, instability, periods of instability like this one. Um, so if you are interested actually in seeing this, I put a link in the blog post to Arweave's Block Explorer. They have a whole page dedicated to documents that have been uploaded related to the Ukrainian crisis um, and invasion. So go check that out. Um, are we, by the way, it's up 18% week over week on this. All right, next up we have Solid, which is part of the Solidly Dex. So Solid is, Solidly is a phantom-based Dex. Those aren't familiar, phantom spelled with an F, not a PH, is a L1 platform. Um, it's quite a bit speedier than Ethereum, as most of them are. Um, but basically, the DEX actually reached $2.3 billion in total value locked TBL in the last two weeks um, oh, since it launched. Um, this actually pushed the project to number one in eight, or sorry, to number 18 in terms of total uh, TBL rankings across all projects, which is fairly significant. Um, Solidly was conceived by Andre uh, Kronj. Um, the founder and developer behind Yearn Finance, Wi-Fi, um, which probably was one of the tokens that kicked off DeFi Summer almost two years ago. Um, and he basically designed um, Solid to kind of help increase TVL to the Phantom Network um, as users deposited assets to liquidity mine the Solid Governance token. So if you're not familiar with liquidity mining, this is basically tokens have been emitted for people who add liquidity or essentially use a new product, they get rewarded with tokens. And that's been a more favored way to get new projects or new tokens out into the uh, system. So despite this, um, the solid token did just launch. So it's down 24% since launching, but um, the TVL, like I said, is incredibly high, which is great to see. Um, all right, so next we have Osmo or Osmosis. Osmosis is a DEX decentralized exchange based on the Atom blockchain. Um, so this week, uh, Osmo released its carbon update, which includes superfluid staking. Um, and superfluid staking, for those of you who don't know, is a combination of liquid derivative staking and liquidity provision into one step. Um, so essentially what it means is that uh, whereas before a user would only just deposit um, assets into a decentralized exchange pool to provide liquidity. And then maybe at another venue, such as Lido, would go and deposit 
base layer assets such, such as Ethereum um, to stake and earn the staking rewards in addition to the ability to have a liquid staking derivative. Um, Osmosis combines that. So users who deposit Atom or other assets into Osmosis now won't just earn the trading fees that they get from being into that, being in that liquidity pool, but they can also earn the staking fees for securing the Atom blockchain. Um, so Osmosis is, um, you know, so this was like a big uh, launch for Osmosis. Um, you know, it's been, it's actually the eighth largest DEX by volume, and it's continued to see strong growth in the face of the market downturn with 30 day volumes only down 12% versus the sector average of 25%, down 25%. Um, Osmosis is up 27% week over week. All right, last but not least, we have Ribbon Finance, which is a decentralized option strategy protocol. Ribbon Finance last week voted to implement what are called uh, what's called vote ec vote escrowed or VE tokenomics. So the, for those who don't know, the VE tokenomics model was popularized by stablecoin automated market maker AMM Curve um, a couple years ago. And the idea is that you essentially um, new emissions of the token can be vote locked or vote escrowed, which means that you lock them up so you can have voting power. And by locking them up, usually for years at a time, you essentially multiply your voting power. So people who view the importance of governance or having more act, you know, ability to um, uh, sway the vote one way or another can um, uh can opt to lock their tokens this way and have more power over the protocol, which is really important if you have a protocol that's generating a lot of fees and revenue, because then you can vote where to direct those fees to. Um, so after passing this new tokenomics, um, the protocol launched a new governance portal and they expect to introduce a protocol fee sharing model in the future. Um, Ribbon actually commands 7% of the decentralized derivatives market, and it's actually the second highest in volumes after DYDX, which is pretty impressive. So um, despite this, it's down 18% week over week, but definitely one to watch as it's doing some interesting things. All right, that's all I have for you guys this week. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed our insights. Uh, tune in here again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear what's driving token prices.